If you have multiple websites and you want to install Google Tag Manager on them, the question is how many Google Tag Manager containers do you need? One for all websites? Or maybe multiple containers, one for each website? In this video, I will help you decide that. If you want to know how many Google Tag Manager containers do you need, you need to answer this question. How similar will be those Google Tag Manager setups on each website? So for example, you have two different websites. One is business1.com and the other one is business2.com. On first website, you plan to track page views, purchases, scroll events, maybe something else. And then on the second website, you plan to track page views, form submissions, menu clicks, banner clicks. Now let's pretend that both of these websites, both of these domains belong to the same business. So now the person running Google Tag Manager is wondering, should they have one container for the entire company and for different websites, or should each website have its own container? So when we look at these two websites, we see that different things will be tracked. Maybe there will be even more differences. For example, on business1.com, they will be using just Google Analytics, while on business2.com, they will be using Google Analytics, Google Ads, and Facebook Ads. In that case, since these two websites are pretty different in terms of tracking setup, I would recommend having two different containers. Later in this video, I will explain advantages and disadvantages of having one or multiple containers. But long story short, I personally prefer having separate containers for different setups. Otherwise, if you have Facebook pixel tag, you will need to make sure that it fires only on business2.com and not fire on any other page. That way your trigger conditions will become more complex. But if you had two separate containers, you would just set Facebook pixel to fire on business2.com on all pages of this website and that's it. You don't need to worry that your tag of business2.com will fire accidentally on business1.com where it's not supposed to do that. Another example could be two different subdomains. Let's say that we have website.com and there are two different subdomains of it. One is blog and the other one is e-commerce website. And their structure is different. Things that will be tracked are different because on e-commerce website, they will be focusing more on e-commerce actions like add to cart, purchases, checkouts. And on the blog, they will be focusing more on content consumption, lead generation, form submissions, maybe some clicks. And as you can see, the setup is fairly different. That is why, again, in this case, even though they are different subdomains of the same domain, I would still recommend using separate Google Tag Manager containers. But there might be some situations where there are different domains, different websites, but they are very similar. For example, there is one website where the language is in English and it's for the English market. And then there is the same website and very similar content translated to the German language. In that case, let's say that both of these sites will track the same things. They will be tracking page views, sales, form submissions, and so on. Since the analytics setup of these two websites will be very similar and the business will be using similar or actually the same marketing and analytics tools like Google Analytics, Google Ads, Facebook Pixel, and so on, I would recommend using the same Google Tag Manager container because in that case, it will be easier. Even though you have two separate domains, it could be enough to use just one Google Analytics tag to fire it and to send data either to website.com Google Analytics property or website.de Google Analytics property. Here I have a demo container of Google Tag Manager and let's say that this container is used on the German version of the website and on the English version of the website. And I have one Google Analytics 4 configuration tag. For those two websites, I decided to create separate Google Analytics 4 properties. So now the question is, how should I configure the container so that English websites data is sent to the English Google Analytics and German websites data is sent to the German version of Google Analytics. I mean to the German property. Well, it is fairly easy to do that and you don't need to make a copy of each tag for each language. In fact, with one tag, we can handle this. Here is the Google Analytics 4 configuration tag. If I click it, well, first of all, I will make it universal. So I mean, it will apply to multiple domains and here, in the measurement ID field, I will not just enter the plain ID, but instead I will use a thing called lookup table. So I will need to click this button to insert the variable. 
then I will click plus to add a new variable, variable configuration, and then select the lookup table. And here I will select the input variable, which is page hostname. So if website's hostname is, let's say www.website.com, then send to one property. If hostname is website.de, then send to another property. And we can name this lookup GA measurement IDs and click save. And then this tag should still fire on all pages. But depending on where this tag fires, it will select the correct measurement ID. If it fires on the English version, then it will use the English properties ID. If it is activated on the German website, then it will use German website's ID. So this is very convenient because if in the future I decide to add a new tag that will track menu clicks on all of those websites, and I mean English website, German website, maybe some other website, I will just need to create one tag and it will cover all the websites. Now let's go back to the final example. So if you have two different subdomains and one of them is, let's say, the main website, the other one is the blog, and you plan to track similar things and they are, let's say, page views, scrolling, link clicks, then you can use the same container. I mean, technically, if you decide, you can go with separate containers as well. However, then the management process will become a bit more difficult and will require a bit more time. So let's take a look at the advantages of each option. If we take a look at one GTM container for multiple domains or multiple subdomains, or in other words, for multiple websites, here are the advantages. First of all, if you do one change and you want to apply it on multiple websites, it will be much easier for you if you just use one container because then you can just click publish and that tag or that trigger or whatever that configuration will apply to multiple websites almost instantly. However, if you have some sensitive tags that should not fire on domain one, but should fire on domain two or vice versa, and you don't want to pollute your data by tracking data from another domain, then you will need to invest more time and create more specific triggers where you will need to include additional conditions to make sure that this tag fires on website one, but not on website two. And in the long run, there is a very high chance that eventually at some point you might mess things up and some tag will be firing for a while on a website where it was not supposed to. Also, if you run a single container on multiple domains, it means that the overall number of tags will probably be higher because you will add one tag that fires only on one website, then another tag that fires only on another website. And there is a limit of size in Google Tag Manager, which is 200 kilobytes. So if you have, let's say five websites and they're all using the same Google Tag Manager container, you will faster reach that maximum limit. And also the larger the container, the more it will affect in a negative way, the speed of the website. So it's for you to decide whether you want to go with one container for multiple domains or not. Now, if we look at multiple containers for multiple domains, for example, container A is for the website A, then here are the advantages. If setups on each website are different, then it will be easier for you to isolate a particular tag and fire it only on one domain and not fire on another domain because website A will only have tags of the container A. Also, since we're talking about one website per one container, the overall number of tags, triggers, and variables should be smaller. That's why the size of the container will be smaller. So there's a lower risk that you will reach the maximum size of the container, and there is a lower potential impact on the website page speed. But this solution is not perfect because it will take you more time to publish a tag on all websites. For example, if you have a container that is used by 10 websites and you want to add a tag to all those websites, you will need to repeat the same thing 10 times. You will need to add one tag to container A, then publish, to container B, then publish, and so on. So this will require more time. And that's why copy pasting and jumping between containers or trying to export one container and import into another container will become a bit tedious work. I hope that now you have decided how many GTM containers do you need. There is no perfect solution here and each option has its advantages and disadvantages. So the final decision depends on you. If you found this video useful, hit the thumbs up button below the video. That will help me understand what videos do you like and what should I create in the future. 
Also, if you want to learn more about Google Tag Manager or Google Analytics 4, then consider subscribing to this channel. My name is Julius, this is Analytics Mania, and I'll see you in the next video.